Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today, uh, we are going to study on the last two chapters from the Code of Honor, which is the last chapters of this book. Before we could begin with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Father, we want to thank you for this time. Lord, we submit ourselves, even as we come before your presence, to learn from your word, to learn from the foundations that everyone, all of us need to adhere to um, even as we step into ministry and as we continue to minister to you and your people. We pray, O oh God, that you continue to speak to us, enrich us by your word, and help us to stand firmly for the truth that you have called us and help us to be accountable for what you have entrusted us, Lord. We step in past Diana to your hand, speak through her, God, and help us to understand the mysteries of your word. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today we're going to study on the very impa uh, important part, that is the money. Money. As uh, money is an important part of our Christian ministry, uh, we also see that there is a need you know, and every day in, day out, we all have expenses. So there is a need for money, not only um, personally for each one of us, uh, but related to our family, for a situation, the everyday need. But then even in Christian ministry, to run the ministry, we need money. So it plays a very vital role personally in the minister's life and also uh, to lead a ministry to <clears throat> lead a ministry so uh, we, uh, so what happens so we are going to concentrate in the ministry okay as a ministry leader how we need to conduct ourselves uh, with regard to money how we are going to handle uh, uh, you know uh, this money in our daily life and in ministry how are we going to focus uh, what is the part that uh, uh, we can play in handling the money in the ministry and how we need to handle it so uh, so there are some do's and don'ts that we would be learning in this chapter so sometimes uh, the need to run a ministry, we may have to raise funds and we are going to learn how we can raise funds wisely. Because uh, most of the time we have seen or um, yeah, some ministers, we have seen that, you know, uh, they end up becoming money minded when it comes to raising funds in the ministry. Yes, as there is a need, there is a way how we can raise funds. So, yes, because there is a need, you raise a fund and you try to meet the need and the ministry keep going, that is okay. But then what happens? This should not become the lifestyle of a person in the ministry. It shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't become a money minded, you know, I need money to do everything. So how will I constantly keep, uh, you know, money flowing into the ministry? So day in and day out, instead of um, as a minister of God, we need to focus on how I can impart to people, how I can teach the word of God, how I can expand the gospel. So instead of that being in our mind, how a minister of God changes his mind. And uh, his mind started to focus on being money minded. So he sets his mind on money and how I can earn money, how I can keep the flow of money coming into the ministry. So what happens here is focus is getting changed from being the minister of God, being uh, setting his focus on the word, how to impart the word. Now his, his focus is changed, his focus is diverted towards money. How I can keep the money flowing into the ministry? What are the areas that I could do to see to it that there is always flow of money? So we need to see to it that our focus is on the Lord and on the call that God has placed in our life. And let not our mind or attention be on money. So this chapter today, we're going to see on some common struggles that we as a Christian minister uh, would face 
when uh, when comes when it comes to money uh, we see the first point here in the books is for the love of money can i request one of us to please turn to first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 and 11 so this session we're going to keep it very interactive i would request you know everyone to be part by uh, please unmuting your mic and reading the scripture so that and also share your doubts share your questions whenever it's needed just uh, raise your hand so that you can share and we can talk and keep this session interactive thank you so if someone has um, taken up first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 and 11 i would request you to please read First Timothy chapter six verses ten and eleven. For the love of money is a root of all kind all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and and pierced themselves through many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Thank you. Thank you. The very verse here says, Love of money is a root of all evil. Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, this is something very important that I want you as a young leader, stay away from this. For which some strayed from faith in their greediness. So it's not the it's not a problem just started now in our time, but then this has been there from the early days of the church. Paul clearly says some strayed from the faith and the greediness and pierced themselves through which many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. So the Bible warns us, as he says, stay away from women the same way stay away from money. This is the second thing which the scripture is warning us. Stay away from money. That, that does not mean that we don't need money or we should not, uh, you know, uh, handle money. It's not that. But keeping our mind on money is something not right. Keeping, you know, constantly thinking of getting money is something not right. Or maybe in our ministry, there may be a lack of money and wondering how we are going to get what we need, or, uh, uh, you know, or to meet the need of the ministry or our personal needs. But then that should not, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever our need is, we need to set our focus on God and look at God to uh, meet our needs and uh, see how we can manage ourselves by cutting down the cost or you no, know, there are many ways that we could handle money in a right way. But then if we have, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, if we keep our focus on money, so there is a very slight, uh, you know, easily sometimes we may slip into the love of money. So how I can tell you uh, uh, one is having this love of money or one has been controlled by, uh, controlled by this love of money. There are a few points that has been listed in our notes. If you have, you can Please turn to page 161, which says, if I'm constantly thinking about how to get money, then I'm controlled by money. If my decision on where I will minister is based on how much money I will get as an offering, then I'm controlled by money. If how much I praise and celebrate God is in proportion to the offering I get, then I'm controlled by money. If I give more importance to people who give bigger offering, but not as much importance to those who do not, then I'm controlled by money. If I'm willing to compromise a little on integrity and do surplus things in order to raise money for ministry, then I'm controlled by and if I feel good when I get to move around with celebrities, rich businessmen or, um, you know, some uh, big uh, people, because I feel they can make large contribution to my ministry, then I'm controlled by them. So these are the, some of the ways which the scripture also warns us, never do anything for money. God says, be focused on me. This ministry is mine. I'm the one who's who need to be focused, who need to be exalted, who need to be looked upon, dependent upon. But if we are dependent on our money, on the money, 
our focus changes, the way we lead our life, the way we lead our ministry changes. We tend to give importance to something else than God. We tend to celebrate people than to celebrate God. We tend to talk about people and praise them than we talking about Jesus and praising his word, praising him. And also, if our uh, teaching and preaching and exalting God uh, depends on the offering that we receive, there's no, uh, the right intention is not there. There is no right attitude towards God there or towards the worship. So we need to set ourselves right. We need to keep ourselves focused on God and his ministry. We receive or we don't receive, but I'm going to lift his name high. Because he is my provider, he is my healer, he is my refuge. When we set our focus right on the word, on God, other things will fall in its place. It is very, very important that we don't do anything for the sake of money. And we treat everyone at the same level. So the next point says, do not be in it for the money. Ministry is not for money. Some people get into the Christian ministry where they think it's an easy way to make money. They think all we have to do is uh, to preach a couple of sermons and then visit some, uh, visit some uh, houses so that you know, we can make easy money and we can lead our life, lead our family, lead our ministry with that. The motive of being in the ministry at the first place itself is not right. So how we can expect God to move in that place? The very motive here is been the money, the easy way to it life. No, we are in the ministry and there is so much more things to do. We, because we are in the ministry, we need to be much more excellent in our work than the other people our standard should be much more higher than the people's standard outside. We need to work hard because the scripture says, Paul says, the labor in the Lord will not go in vain. Labor, where we give, we work hard more than 101 days. We need to work hard. We need to labor the kingdom of God. There's so much thing to do when it comes to serve the Lord in the ministry. There's no time limit we can set. We need to be available for people 24 by 7. So it's not that I, I'm not saying you're like 365 days, 24 by 7. No, but keeping ourselves available. When there is a need for people, you are there to be there for people because of his sake, his name's sake. God was there for me. He has lifted me, you and me, for this to serve his people, to be there for them, to help them. Because Jesus was there. He has already set an example how we need to serve. Jesus never did anything for the sake of money. So here's the example that we can follow. So in the Christian ministry, we need to be very careful to set our motives right, to keep things in order, uh, you know, not to seek... Uh, 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 not uh, no, our motive should not be seeking the financial support uh, from others to run our ministry, especially if people. Some of the ministries in India they seek financial support from overseas. So this uh, has become a trend in some some uh, states, some cities where people start the ministry to seek financial support from overseas. Because they are ready to support the ministries in India, to establish the ministry, to serve among the villages, among the rural part of, of India. So what happens here is they, uh, uh, the ministry leader in India may uh, ask a surplus amount from the overseas. And when he gets that amount, yes, he will set up a ministry, he may do certain things, but the cost may not be the same as what he receives. And he needs to be accountable. Well, if that amount goes, may not be the actual amount that he would spend in the ministry. So as a ministry leader, we need to be accountable. 
Yes, we need to be accountable to God and also accountable to, to man, to the organization who's supporting him with the, with the funds. So what happens here is generally this has been the trend or the, this has been the pattern in India for the ministry leaders are not very sure about the other places. But here in some of the places, what they do is they start the ministry and they first start an orphanage or an whole day gym. So what they do is they share the pictures, they show the photographs saying that I'm taking care of 100 or 200 children. I have adapted, um, you know, I have adopted a village. Uh, a rural area uh, where this is the need that the people are having. Yes, there is a genuine need, but then I hope and I pray that the ministry leader who's portraying the need of the people actually receives the exact one that what is needed, not, uh, not uh, you know, um, demands for a huge amount and spends very little to the people. So these are the areas as a leader, we need to be very careful. God is still watching. God sees our motive. Our motives need to be right. We are accountable for every money, especially when it comes to ministry. This is ministry. This, is, this money belongs to God. With fear and with trembling, we need to handle this money. Because the person who's sending from abroad is giving it for a good cause. He's sowing in the ministry. He's sowing in the kingdom of God for this money to be used. So as a ministry leader, with all honor, with all good motive, the intention that you have started this ministry, the orphanage or the old age, we need to use that funds wisely. Wisely. If it's been used that way, you see the blessing of God upon your life. But then if it is misused, we are accountable to God. We are putting ourselves in a very dangerous position in the kingdom of God. And the next is, so spiritually, let people give materially. So spiritually, let people give materially. Can I request one of us to please uh, uh, turn to Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, and the other turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 and 14, please? Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 and 14. If we have sown spiritually things for you, it is great thing if we reap your material things. Even so... Wait a minute. Ma'am, you want me to read this in this one, the 1 Corinthians 9, 14, which is in the notes? Yes, 11 and 14. Okay. If we have sown spiritually things for you, it is great things if we reap your material things. Even so, Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live for gospel. Amen. So what it says here, Paul is instructing the Corinthian church. If we have sown spiritually for you, it is a great thing that we will reap your material things. So he's instructing them. Do not set your mind on the material things. God has ordained us as a leader, as a ministry leader. We need to invest on spiritual things, spiritually into the lives of people. Let our, fo let our focus not be on money. When, when our motives, when our intentions are set right, I need to share the gospel. I need to see to that people, uh, people receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I need to see people, their lives are transformed. They are leading uh, their life as per the will of God. Uh, God's call and purposes are fulfilled in people's life. When our focus is set on that and we run towards people uh, with a good intention of teaching the word, serving uh, people being there for them, not for the sake of anything else, but the sake of God. So in this way, when we sow spiritually, we see automatically material things will flow in. God will put the intentions in their heart to bless us financially. 
to bless us with our material needs. There are many proven examples, especially in our class itself. When you started your ministry, when you started serving God, I'm sure in many ways God has blessed each of us. If I only ask open to all, you know, when I ask, uh, like, can you share a tes testimony of how God, how you serve the Lord and how God met your needs supernaturally? I'm sure each of us will have a testimony to share because this is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. That when we sow, uh, sow spiritually into people's life, God in turn will bless us and meet every need of us. So what we learn is we must first sow spiritually. And then when we do it faithfully and uh, consistently without any expectation, God will lead people to bless us. Bless us in different ways. It can be uh, it can be financially, it can be material. All our need will be met, but we need to set our focus on God to serve Him. So uh, we also realize that this may not be possible in some of the uh, you know the rural places, in the churches where uh, where uh, you know very poor people attend the church. In their situation, it may be difficult for the ministry leader. Uh, to run his church, to pay the bills or, you know, to uh, rent out a place. He may have to rent a church, pay the rent to a church, electricity bill or serving people, being there to provide for the church people. So in that, uh, in in this situation, the ministry leader need to serve people, need to provide people. So he may not get anything from the congregation, but then he needs to be a blessing to the people. So in that case, we need to look out for such pastors and ministry leaders. And we, people who live in the city, should be there to bless them, should be there to encourage the ministry work, what they are doing in the rural area. So we need to be a blessing. We need to so in their ministry, so in those ministry leaders, so that financially uh, their needs are being met. So that, uh, you know, they don't uh, set their mind or focus on their daily needs, what they need to go through. But they, and, uh, without, any, um, without any difficulty, the man of God can serve the Lord in the area among the poorest of the poor. So it is our duty, uh, who, those leaders who are in the city, to be there to help such churches in the rural places. The next point here we see is keep your fundraising clean, transparent, and honorable. It is very important uh, for the main reason why we raise the fund. For example, if we may raise a fund for a building church, now we need to keep that fund uh, that is coming in and make use of that fund only to build the church purpose. We cannot use that fund as there is an in immediate need in the orphanage. Now, this ministry leader may also have an orphanage. Okay. And then there is some kind of shortage there. So he should not take the fund from uh, which has been raised to build the church. He cannot take the fund from there and use it towards the orphanage. He needs to use it exactly for the purpose that he has raised the fund. Though these both may be from the ministry run by the same ministry leader, but then he needs to, uh, you know, honor the people who are blessing the cost towards what they have given. If at all uh, it happens that he has received a surplus amount, he has constructed the church and there is a remaining uh, some amount. So he needs to keep the congregation updated and take their permission to, uh, to use that fund towards something else. It may be an orphanage or it may be towards uh, another ministry like youth ministry or uh, traveling on missions or it can be any other or children's ministry, any other area you're going to use this fund. First, we need to keep our congregation updated. This was the amount, certain amount been collected, and this was the actual cost, the expense that has been made, and this is the balance amount that we have. So can we use this amount towards our youth ministry? Or can I use 
this amount towards a children's ministry. We need to be transparent. We need to take permission from the congregation because it is not our money. It is theirs money. They have sown into the kingdom of God towards a particular project. Now, we need to take permission and move on to the next step. Now, whatever we do, we need to be, we need to keep it transparent. We need to make a note and keep it available. And we need to, uh, uh, this is what we do at our church. Uh, any funds that has been collected, we keep it transparent. We keep it updated. For example, recently we had this COVID relief fund where, um, uh, you know, our church came forward uh, to raise funds, uh, raise funds and, uh, and and meet the needs of the pastors in all over India, all over India. So we had received about 8,000 requests. We never thought about it, but suddenly we, uh, you know, within a week's time or two weeks time, we extended one more week. So we received about 8,000 pastors requesting for help financially. So it was in different ways, you know, some pastors to manage their family, to provide their groceries, or some of them could not pay fees for their school. So, uh, you know, for the school and um, towards the church, many other ways. So we had some criteria for which they would like to apply and they applied. So we had received 8,000. So what happened? Pastor set up a team and also some of our Bible college students were part of the team to help us out. So we started calling. We started calling on the pastors who have applied for this fund. And at the same time, on our church website, we have created a page saying how much the fund is coming in. As you give, you see the number there. And then how much has been used towards which ministry? Is it towards the family, pastor's family? Is it towards uh, providing the grocery to the rural area, rural villages, remote places to the pastors who are there? Is it towards the pastor's children's school fees? You know, many areas. So what we need to do, uh, one side, there is an update happening on the page online. So how much money is gone? How much money is come? How much uh, the balance? What is the balance? All the details have been updated on the on the uh, web page online. So anyone, anyone from any part of the world can log in to our uh, website and go to this uh, fundraising page and get all the details. And at the same time, we were not, uh, you know, providing this fund to everyone. We had a verification team. So we started verifying them. Is it a genuine need? Can they survive themselves? Or is uh, is it difficult? And also, there were a lot of uh, many other steps that we were verifying and we were supporting to the pastors who had need. So from 8,000, it came up to 3,500 or close to 4. I'm not very uh, correct with the numbers, like how many pastors we helped to, but it was around uh, 3,500 plus or 4,000 pastors we could help pastors and their family and uh, the uh, uh, rural villages, we could help them. So whatever we did was transparent. We kept it uh, available for our church congregation to see. And here are some things when we raise funds to keep in mind. Do not claim to live by faith and then go around directly or indirectly hinting or even compelling people to give. We should not do that. When we say we live by faith, then we need to depend on God. Or when we need, you can say there is a need. If you're willing, you can be a blessing. And don't have to do that uh, indirectly or uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, asking people to pray. You know, there is a need or compelling people. If you give, you'll receive a blessing. If not, God won't bless you. No, these are certain things that we can avoid. Do not use prayer request as an indirect means to tell people that you need a certain amount of money. Do not go after big businessmen, politicians, or so on, asking for huge money, saying that there's a need in the ministry. This is something that we need to intentionally avoid from uh, forcing people to give money or emotionally manipulating them to give money. We should not do that. 
people come to church, come to our ministry seeking help. They may have some struggle and they have come. So we should not make use of uh, their emotional need. By we uh, meeting the emotional need, we cannot expect them to bless us in turn with certain amount of money. So with this, we will move on to the next point. <clears throat> Do not be dependent. Sorry. Do not be dependent on foreign support. Very clear. Very clear. As much as possible. I think uh, our churches in India have enough of funds where we all can manage. People are grown. They all are working in very good companies. You know, we can survive as much as possible. When we look at things around, when we serve you among the people, I think we can survive on our own. We should not, uh, we should stop having this mentality in our mind that we need foreign support to sustain ourselves here or to serve or to do ministry in India. We should not have this thing in our mind. We should always think this is God's ministry. If God as if God wants us to start a ministry, God will be the provider. God will lead us. Our dependence should be totally on God and not on ourselves. We need. Uh, we don't have to seek for any foreign support. Now the times have changed in India. We all are doing well. We just need to have the right kind of heart and mindset uh, as we serve here. Because um, the cities in India are the power centers, you know, where the places of wealth are. If you are starting a ministry in the city, I'm sure, yes, in the initial days, there may be few challenges. But then as you genuinely serve God, you see the growth in your ministry and you can survive on your own. Now, as ministry leaders, uh, we would like to give this. Uh, this is what we encourage our students to do. Initially, when we start a ministry, there will be a financial need. So how do we go about it? I'll just share what our pastor did. When he came back from the U.S., as he was working there, he came down with his family with two children. He came. He came in... 2000 when he came back he, yes he came back to india with the intention of starting a church and at the same time starting a business as well so first what he did is he started a business he started in about 2000 december december 2000 uh, he started his business uh, he came in and i think jan 2001 he started his he started his business and in feb 2001 he started the church so what happened? Financial need of him, his family, was met through the work that he was doing. At the same time, he can also support the ministry and, you know, and, and start the ministry. And later part, as the ministry grew, grew much bigger and the ministry needed more of his time, then he also sends the uh, Lord asking him to close down his business. He closed down his business and he fully concentrated on the ministry. Till then, he was trying to handle both ministry and business. But he kept it very clean. He kept both the things separate. He kept the accounts part of church and business separate. He never mixed it together. This is something that we can learn. In fact, the business blessed the ministry. He, see, he saw to it that he put in his tithe and also whenever there was a need in the ministry, you know, he could put in some extra funds to run his ministry because he was earning, he was working. But then it was not vice versa. He never added a rupee from the ministry money to his business. He never did that. This is something that we need to be very careful when we work and when we do our ministry. Two are separate. Two are different. We cannot mix both. But then we need to be very mindful that, you know, how we handle our work and our ministry. And when we receive the foreign funds, at the same time, we need to be accountable by giving them the correct uh, details. How you used that money. We should not be billing them double. 
showing up different projects. Yes, you provided a uh, fund to, um, you know, uh, to construct a church, but then uh, with that money, I've also uh, used it towards the orphanage or I've also used it towards the other ministry. We should not do that. What they have provided you, use it only for that purpose. Remaining, you be accountable to them and return it to them. This is God's money. We cannot personally handle it on our own. Check what the organization, the Christian organization who blessed you uh, from um, different ways. Ask them what can be done. If they say send it back, be happy. Give them completely. Let your bills be clear. Do not double bill. Do not, uh, you know, show different projects and you uh, you uh, expand the expense, increase the expense towards uh, 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 by conducting crusades, conducting some meeting. No, we should not be doing that. Whatever purpose that we receive the fund for, we need to use it for that. And if there's any excess, give it back. See to it, our expenses are within that budget what has been given. It should not even super exceed and demand for more money. We need to be very careful. We need to be mindful when we handle money, especially more careful when we handle money of somebody else or some other ministry organization. We should not divert funds from one project without the donor's permission. Clear permission need to be taken. Write it down. Let it be in writing. Show them the clear expense. This is what the expense was. Are you willing? Can I use it for other purpose? If you want me to send it back, I would be more than happy to send it back. Be clear what you do. Let our hands be clean, front of God and front of man. We should not rob overseas ministries. By showing any extra amount, extra expense, we are robbing them. This is not right, friend of God. This is sin. So we need to avoid doing any such things. Do not mix ministry money and business. We already discussed on this. Keep ministry uh, uh, accounts separately from the business account. God's house is not for merchandising. Do not, uh, do not be a temple thief. So this is uh, one more way where the many churches come up with, you know, uh, they try to make a small business center in the church by selling the products. Like, you know, it can be anything like holy oil, holy water. Mm, then they have some, uh, supernatural or miracle salt, or they have some calendars, photo frames, biblical uh, Bibles. Now, when they sell, if they give an actual cost, it is okay. Or even if they keep a little bit of profit for, uh, you know, to meet the administration need, that is okay. But what if they add, uh, make it double the cost, double the price, make it a business? So this is when it is wrong. This is where we see in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, 12 to 14, Jesus, you know, uh, chases the, uh, the, uh, the merchandise people, the business people there who are in the house of God. What happened? The people from very far off places were coming into the temple of Jerusalem to do the, to offer sacrifice. Instead of carrying the sacrifice from uh, from their places, like whatever they want to sacrifice, it can be the, the sheep or the lamb or... Um, it can be the pigeons, the doves, whatever it was. So what they did is they started selling them for double the price. So your God says you're the den of thieves. So we need to be very careful. We should not do that. It can be some, you know, uh, uh, DVDs or publications, many things that they sell. But see to it that it is a genuine cost that we sell it. And do not, uh, we should not force people by saying, if you buy this book, the man of God would have written a book and saying, okay, this is one of the best books. And if you buy this book, God will bless you. And if you buy two books, God is going to bless you this way. And telling, uh, and also putting an auction on that book. If anyone can buy actual price of this book, Maybe, for example, I'm saying uh, maybe 500 and the person is saying, who can buy this book for 1000 
who can buy this book for 2000 selling a book that is marked at 500 selling it for higher rate by you know putting it on auction and saying that can you give 50000 for the ministry over this book so that you know god is going to bless you mightily or you will receive a miracle within a week you know these are the different business strategies that people use most of the time in many of the uh, um, Christian television channels, we see how people pressurize, take your phone now, right now, pick, make a call, transfer the amount, come at yourself. Do you think God will be happy about it? God said, freely you have received, freely you give. Don't make my blessing a business towards people. In fact, Jesus saw the 5,000 people who came to hear a sermon were hungry. He didn't want to send them back. He saw the very need of people. And what did Jesus say? My, I don't want to send my people hungry. Let's give them something to eat. So whatever Jesus had, he multiplied it supernaturally. And he gave them. He was a blessing to them. But he never took from them. Jesus never demonstrated saying that uh, you have to give double the money so that you'll receive that much of blessing. Jesus never demonstrated that. So what are we teaching? Jesus showed us that in giving, you will be blessed. And we we'll be mindful of that as a ministry leader. Can we see to it how we can be a blessing, what we can give to our congregation, to our people, than getting into a time of greed getting into this, you know, uh, uh, getting into uh, the mindset of money-minded, how we can raise funds, how we can receive much more money through the ministry, how we can take our ministry international, how we can, uh, you know, uh, multiply the need or start different uh, projects or uh, ministries so that, you know, we can financially be supported towards each and every ministry. This should not be in the ministry leader's mind. Money should be something least. Yes, there is a need, but God will meet that need. As a ministry leader, we need to be focused on how we can serve people. And also, yeah, uh, there's another point that says, give financially into other ministries. So as a church in the city wide, and as you've been uh, blessed by your own church people, when you see the financial flows flowing to your church, you need to be mindful of blessing other ministries who are in need around us, especially in the rural areas where we said the congregation may be poor. The pastor needs help to bless, um, you know, to run the church and at the same time bless his congregation people. So we need to look forward for those churches and be there to bless them continually every month after month. So as a church, as a ministry, who are doing well financially, we need to support other ministries by giving into them. So with this, uh, we complete on this chapter, money. I open it to the class. Like if you have anything to share, add, or discuss, please feel free to unmute and ask your questions or share your thoughts and insights. Class, go ahead if you have anything to share. Any questions? Yes, please, Sid. Ma'am, I have a question. Like you shared yes. a point. So spiritually, let people give materially. Ma'am, in Northern India, we see many, there are many pastors who have a price list. If you like, if you want a family blessing prayer, you have to pay this much. If you want the pastor to come in your home and visit, you have to pay this much. Ma'am, is it good or bad according to Bible? You tell me, Sid. What do you think? From according to me, it is like looting people. It's bad. Exactly. You answer the question. That should not be our intention, isn't it? I've also seen uh, some man of God going into the people's house, sitting. Till you give, I, I will not go. You know, you'll preach, you will share. But till they have been blessed with uh, financially, they will not leave that house. 
or uh, uh, preaching the word expecting something bigger from them or uh, knowing that if I go to this house, they will be blessing me with a bigger money. Or if I go to this businessman, or if I talk about this businessman in the church, uh, he will bless me with a big tithe or a big offering. Or uh, if I promote his business in the church, you know, I, uh, I will be receiving a bigger offering. Well, church is not a promotional center. We need to be mindful of that. It is not a business center. Church is a place where we talk about God as we already studied, like do not uh, give the pulpit time to the devil. We should only uh, share the word of God from the pulpit and, you know, speak about it, exhort, encourage people, direct them to Jesus. Elisha, yes. Yes, Jim. Please go ahead. I have a, um, a question, like more like a discussion point. So uh, imagine a pastor uh, or ministry leader he's working so um where does his tithe and offering should go like can he invest in his own ministry or is he subjected to give to the local i mean maybe the mother church he you know he was benefited from earlier so what, what are your thoughts pastor uh, there are two ways john one if your church is in the initial stage, it is still growing and there is a financial need in the church. So there you will support yourself. You will give financially to your own church and see to it that, you know, you will tithe and give your offering to your own church to support it, to financially run and manage it. But if the church is running well, you are uh, the church congregation is meeting the financial need, then we can uh, financially give our tithe and offering to our mother church. This is what is my thought. It's not like uh, right. I'm not saying this is 100% right. This is how we need to follow. Um, this is just my suggestion. Okay. This is my suggestion. Um, but then you need to give that to the church. It needs to go towards the kingdom of God. Even as a ministry leader, if uh, we receive the tithe and offering, uh, for example, if it is a church where the management is set and, you know, uh, where you receive a salary. So because you're receiving a salary, a set amount, you know what will be your tithe and you know how much to be given as an offering. Right. But if there's uh, some small churches in the rural areas and all, uh, uh, you know, uh, they they uh, uh, they uh, try to live their life or uh, manage the ministry in the tithe and in the offering individually what they receive sometimes in the church they receive sometimes when they go on house visit they receive so whatever amount they receive they should see to it that the tithe and the offering has been given to the church now that can be to their own church because there's a financial need in their own church or uh, if the church is uh, uh, well settled and the financial needs are met they can bless other churches or their mother church so it is just again um, just my thought so you can take a call john or we can yes, discuss yes, yeah. Thank this you, point pastor. on Tuesday during the mentoring hour with pastor also sure boss yeah thank you and also i encourage all our students to be there for the mentoring hour on thursdays and also for the time of supernatural on every friday it is a time of blessing i would encourage all our students to be there it's from morning eight till nine Yes, Elisha, please go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I want to find out from, um, um, I know of a, of a, a church that uh, the head, the head pastor only organizes revival and, and prayer meetings for the members when he has the intention of raising funds. So whenever there is a call to prayer, there's a call for uh, to carry in prayer. He organizes a nice program, and the main intention is not to uh, to equip the people, but rather to uh, to meet his financial needs. Uh, I want to find out if uh, this intention is good enough to to organize prayer meeting because you want to meet your financial need as a minister. Mm -hmm. um, 
anyone in the class can help me uh, uh, th with this question because I'm not able to understand the question. There's some disturbance, I guess, on my side that I could clearly, uh, I didn't get Elisha's question clearly. Elisha, is it possible that you could type in the chat so I can read your question and answer? Or anyone, if you all have heard Elisha through, can you all please? Let me type. John, Divya, if you have heard uh, Elisha's question, can you please help me? Uh, can you all just tell me the question what Elisha was asking? Was it clear? Were you all able to hear? Um, I was not able to comprehend. Um, Elisha, if you could. Uh, if, Elisha, it would okay. be good if you yeah. could type the question on the chat. Yes, ma'am. I'm typing the, the question. It, because, you know, for me, yeah, I don't thanks. know, I think my side, your voice was a little breaking and I could not get the question. Can I request you to please type it? Maybe a very important question. Can I request you to please okay, type I, I, Okay, I'm typing, madam. Yes, thank you. Anyone else in the meanwhile? Any other questions do we have before we could close the session and take a 10 minutes break? Because this is very important, especially for our ministry leaders. We need to understand how we can handle money in ministry. Good morning, everyone. Yes, please go ahead. Um, ministry and money, they are, they are two different things here. Okay, I think he, let's answer his question before I can make an input, please. Yes, thank you, you know. The pastor only organizes prayer meetings for his church. When he wants to meet his financial needs, is the intention right? Okay, yes. If he is conducting a, a, a meeting, a prayer meeting or a crusade, and with this intention, the intention is good. Intention is good. There is also a big need to conduct this crusade and the prayer meeting. So you can raise funds. You can raise funds. The best thing what we can do is you have a committee member. You raise a team where they, uh, or you, you will have an account set for this particular crusade, for this particular meeting. So all the funds that come in will be accounted. Accounted. So we know how much has been collected towards the need of this crusade or towards the need of this prayer meeting. Now, the next, the expense. For example, if 10 lakh has been collected and if the expense of the crusade is about 8 lakh, so there is a balance of 2 lakh. You can tell the congregation, thank you so much for blessing us with this amount. We have received surplus 10 lakh. Okay, and we have, and the expense was about 8 lakh. And you need to have a team who will be accounting the money that is received. At the same time, the expense has been detailed along with the bills have been collected. Especially in ministry, our expense need to be supported with the, uh, with the bills. Not the bill that is uh, simply written in a piece of paper. No, it needs to be official bill with the tax number and all that. Yes, there are small expenses, uh, small uh, expenses of people who do not have the tax bill. Okay, we can write a voucher for that. But then most of our big expenses need to be, uh, uh, need to receive a bill. It needs to be supported for 8 lakhs. We need an 8 lakh supporting bill. 
Okay, we need eight lakh supporting bill. Just give me a minute, please. Sorry, sorry about it. Okay, I'm back. So we need to keep the expense clear and the balance two lakh. We need to tell the congregation that there is a balance two lakh. How we can use this one? You can ask them, and then take their permission how to use it for the next event or keep it for the next event to happen. Did that answer your question, Elisha? So what um, are the don'ts? Yes, just because we have received 10 lakh, we should not be creating an expense uh, uh, of double billing or making it show people like the expense was 10 lakh. Or sometimes we should not add extra expenses to it and show it became 11 lakh or 12 lakh and saying we are in need of two more lakhs extra. We collected 10, but our expense went up to 12. So please give in two more lakh. You know, this should not be our intention. In this way, we are robbing people. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Can Did I, that, can uh, I put my... answer your question? Yes, yes, you know, please. Uh, all right. Let me start this... from what the question he asks. He said, a pastor only organize prayer meeting when he want to meet his financial need now the statement said when he's going to meet his financial need this is my own contribution if he's going to meet the church financial need then i'm comfortable but if he want to meet his financial his own financial need in terms of what one thing that led me to what I wanted to say before. One thing is ministry. Ministry is, is one thing. Financial ministry is another thing. When we're talking about financial integrity, this has to apply with ministry. You see today, many people open a ministry because of money. I am a preacher. Every one of us loves money. But we will give account of everything to God as a preacher. My own experience, let me use this. When we started our ministry, we don't have accounts, church accounts then. So I will tell a brother in the church whom we are doing the fellowship in his house, hold the money. So one day I asked him, how much is the money? He told me very clear. He said, Pastor, I spent part of the money. I said, why? You didn't hear from me? Who is the general overseer? Yeah. You didn't hear from anybody? You spend money. I said, that is a sin. But I wouldn't want God to punish you with it. I approve it, but make sure you return the money back. Because as a, the leader, if you say otherwise, there will be punishment. For not taking, but for me to leave it that punishment, I went to God, please have mercy on him. But I've given instruction to return the money. Now, if we must be sincere, we shouldn't tamper with the church money. The moment you brought the money, you, you may bring the money, but the moment you say you donate this money or you give this money to God, it's no longer your own money, it's God's money. And you have to give account to your members, to your committee, uh, your committee. You have to give account of everything that is from God. That is where many people miss it because we mix. We we want. Uh, uh, how will I put it? We we think because we are the leader of the church, we have access to money. Then we can go ahead and spend it. No. This money is not your money any longer. Even if you have $20 billion and you bring it to the church, the moment you made up your mind and said to the church, God walk in the spirit, he will hold you accountable to it. Whether you like it, either we like that or not, it's not your money any longer. 
we must be integrity we must know that financial integrity in ministry is number one key uh, i am a, a minister of god let me use the minister of pastor paul and nature he says something he said he was not having one error in his pocket the same thing pastor Debo, he said so that george has money and the money is right there in his house and he does not have one naira and the money was kept under his wife and the wife his wife was not around he traveled he had to call his wife in uk why is nigeria please there's also so money in that place i don't have money please can i make use of it the wife said ah you are my jew but the money in question is for the ministry. Before you spend it, we have to also tell the rest of the brethren. That is financial integrity. So we must know, we must stand that financial integrity is very, very good. Any pastor, any preacher yes. who organizes a program because of, of money, because of financial need of his own, he has missed it with due respect. But there is also a way because ministry, you said something, you can't stop, there is you can't serve God without money. Once you are dead genuinely, God will bring the money. God will bring the money. He does not let his own empty. It, it may be difficult for us in the beginning of ministry, but he will surely provide. He will have seen it doing many things for people. Why won't he do for me? But there's always a time for everything. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, you know, for sharing. This is very important. Yes, we need to have integrity in our money. What we did in our church is from day one, uh, like what pastor did from uh, 2001 onwards, even though there were about 10 people meeting in his uh, dad's place, they started writing the tithe and offering. So they have, uh, a, you know, a book with all the details. And even till date, no matter even we are a different in location, uh, every week, the, uh, the tithe and offering that we collect in the church has been accounted. We have a team. It's not the pastor who's counting. We have set a team in our church. So after the service, the team takes the money. There are about two people or sometimes three they sit together in open space, not inside some room, in an open space, they sit and they count the money. So what happens when they count? Other people, the people in the congregation, look at them. It's open, so no one will take it. And also the people, the team who are counting their money will not be related to each other. All three will be three different people. Okay, so they will come accounted and they'll count the money and they will write how many uh, 2,000, how many thousand, how many 500s, how many hundreds, you know, each rupee note in the envelope, giving all the details, they'll total it and then they put it in an envelope, staple it or they uh, close it and they'll hand it over to the pastor. And then what pastor does, though, because we are from a different location, for example, if you are in Bangalore, they somehow reach it to the main office, church office. So in Bangalore, we have uh, we have five locations. So five locations every Sunday, they receive the Titan offering. There's a team sitting in the location immediately after service. They are counted. They write it in the in the envelope. And by Monday or Tuesday, they will see to it that money reaches the church office. And they also, um, you know, take a picture and send it. Keep the accountant updated. And then what we do is uh, we uh, in Manglo, what we do is we collect it and we uh, we calculate there and we take a photo and send the details to the church office, the accountant in the church office. So immediately our team uh, is updated that this is the amount that has been calculated and this is the number of people that attended the church service. Uh, these are the this many adults we had, this many children we have, and you know first time visitors, first time who have come to our church church we we take account of every detail so all these details will be en entered in the envelope about the envelope and we insert the money inside the envelope and pack and keep it and then later during the week we deposit it we 
deposited. At Manglo, we deposit once a month, you know, accumulating all four weeks. And we do together, we deposit because there are certain charges each and every deposit has certain charges. So uh, to make that uh, admin easy, uh, you know, we started doing it one deposit every month, one deposit. So in that way, we pay a fee of one once and we deposit that amount. This is how we manage our account. So everything has been accounted. Everything is clear. And it is we are getting the church people also involved. Somebody who is very genuine in the leadership will be there to account all this. So this is something uh, that is working well and it is clear. This is something that we at church, we practice it. And if it is helpful, even we can apply it in any of our ministry areas. So with this, I think we have already crossed and five. We'll take a quick 10 minutes break or, you know, and after 10 minutes, we can come back. So maybe by 10, 15, we can come back. So you can apply 10 minutes to your own time zone and we can come back and we can go through the next and that will be our last chapter on fame. Is that okay? Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. So see you after 10 minutes.